What is up Capricorn? Welcome to your general timeless reading. These are timeless, so whenever you see this is when it's most meant for you. These are also general, so check out your sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter, and also only take what resonates and leave the rest. My name is Jordan. I am a master Reiki practitioner, and if you want a personal reading or Reiki session, you can go ahead and book it down below through my website in the description box. Also, if you want to join Patreon, you can get a free 15-minute reading now through May 31st, 2021, if you join as a tier three or four patron. So go ahead, check that out. That's where I do the monthly readings, energy shift readings, moon cycle readings, and weekly Patreon-only videos. I also post those monthly readings on Vimeo, so if you want to purchase your individual monthly, you can do so there. Like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, it helps the channel grow, and hit that notification bell so you can see when I post and when I go live. Other than that, Capricorn, let's get into it. Let's see what goodies we got going on for you. Capricorn, I want to use um, Tarot of Dreams, right? I believe that's what this is called. All the tarot decks I use are going to be linked down below for you guys, okay? So let's get into it. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. I want to make sure I have all of these. Okay. <sighs> for Capricorn, please spirit, show me what I'm asking to see for Capricorn. Sun, moon rising, Venus and Jupiter for Capricorn. Whoop! Really? Really? Who was it? The fool. The fool wanted to come out. Show me what I'm listening to see for Capricorn, please, Spirit. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for Capricorn. <sighs> Eight of Swords in reverse. The Palace of Pentacles, Palace of Coins in reverse, and the Queen of Cups in reverse. This feels like someone's sitting in a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, where their heart spaces become so overwhelmed with the stress and anxiety that's actually stopping them from receiving their abundance. Palace cards actually describe the environment in this particular deck. The Eight of Swords is Gemini energy, the Palace is Earth energy, and the Queen of Cups is Cancer energy. So water, okay? Remember, um, tarot doesn't have to necessarily read you. It can read someone in your environment or someone you're connected to. If you're new to tarot, check out how to interpret tarot as a viewer, okay? It's linked down below in the description box. I go over like what signs to watch and why also in that reading. King of Swords in reverse, whoo! I just heard manipulation with this. And commander. Um, I heard commander and manipulation. This this feels like a very controlling energy. Um, you might be dealing with someone who's very controlling, and I kind of feel like this person might be causing the eight of swords in the environment for this queen of cups. Let's keep going. Tell me more. For Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising. Oh my gosh, this is actually making like my solar and my heart space like really um, just, I would say twisted is the right word. I almost feel like they're being pulled over to my left side, which is the feminine side. Out of alignment. Wow, yeah, Empress in Reverse and the Eight of Cups. Yeah, this queen's giving to their detriment and the Eight of Cups is literally the card of walking away. It's walking away from the things that no longer serve you. It's, it's walking towards your happiness. Bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Pentacles in reverse. Uh, this kind of feels like someone who's lost, who doesn't know what to do, what, how to build uh, the next steps. It's kind of, it's, it's almost like, it kind of feels like pleading for guidance. Underneath that is the Ten of Cups in reverse. Wow, followed by the Ten of Swords in reverse. Wow, well, that's sad. That's really sad. This definitely feels like a connection going south quick, to be honest with you. Just, let's just call it what it is. Because the Eight of Swords leads to the Ten of Swords, and the Eight of Cups leads to the Ten of Cups, and we got both of them right here. So let's see how this, how this plays out. 
because they're both in reverse so it could be a delay but it's it kind of feels like we have the feminine energy giving to the detriment and a masculine energy being a little manipulative and it's creating a very unstable environment and there is an emotional detachment going on with the eight of cups which is pisces energy and versus venus gemini uh tor no well, almost said gemini virgo which is mercurial energy it's not that it's not a magician it's an empress which is venus taurus libra energy that was weird almost said gemini virgo oh that's not you that's me <laughs> that's funny <laughs> okay um okay, yeah we'll do crystal visions for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and oh my gosh, yeah, now my right arm is starting to really get tight, and that's the masculine side. Um, I start total surrender. That feels more, yeah, that's, I, okay, I kind of feel like this masculine energy is going through a really big transformation, though, and I feel like this Empress is about to walk away, and that's, oh yeah. And as soon as that happens, this masculine energy is going through it. Okay. Let's start with this Eight of Swords. Let's see what's going on, going on with the Eight of Swords energy. Temperance. Let the majors begin. Major Arcana are universal energy. So it's energy outside of our control. Whereas Minor Arcana, like uh, the Eight of Cups, like the Aces through the Tens, those are day-to-day -day activities. Major Arcana, so like Temperance, the Devil, Empress, Emperor, um, etc. Right? Those are energies outside of our control. Energies kind of thrusted, up, thrusted upon us by the Divine. So this is a lot of healing. This is um, actually just her patience. I start resilience and patience. Okay, this feels like the feminine really struggling, like trying to catch their bearings. Like, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I go? How do I handle the situation? It's all going to unfold in divine time. Yep, the, <laughs> the world's in reverse. And then you have the two of wands. A new opportunity is going to open up. The cycle's not quite over yet, though. It's, it's going to open up in divine time. Oh my gosh, this is actually like giving me chills. There's something. The world is Capricorn, Saturn energy. That is your energy. It's one of your majors outside of the devil. Uh, then you have the two of wands, which is Aries energy. That speaks to new opportunities, new opportunities for healing. There, there is a cyclic energy going on here um, with the world card being 21. And just being the world, right? A cycle. Let's look at the palace of coins, the environment for Capricorn. The star, and it literally landed like on the armrest against my table. More majors. More majors. I'm feeling this all, this is crazy. Like I'm getting like a lot of physical sensations like in my arm and in my back. Like I feel like physically, if you're in a connection with somebody and you're having like a lot of physical sensations, you two might be really tied and exchanging a lot of your stress, a lot of your anxieties, a lot of your shadows. I'd highly recommend working on your shielding and being mindful of what's really your emotions, your energy, and what's your person's. So if you're prone to like anxiety attacks, depressions, depression, anxiety attacks, depression, um, or just high levels of stress and overwhelm. I'd highly recommend like practicing like breathing techniques, like yoga, walking outside, spending more time in the sun, drinking a lot of water, things that really ground you and manage your stress properly. I feel like these two people are almost like intermingled in their energy. And this transformation feels very, it, it feels like it's both sides because I've been fine all day. And then all of a sudden, as soon as we start this reading, like my left and my right side have, have random pains popping up now. And, um, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. This is a very destined, um, connection though with, you have temperance, the world and the star and temperance is indicative of, to me as a reader, it is your higher consciousness energy. It's your angels, ancestors, and guides. It's also about patience and reconciliation. 
Um, but the world in reverse tells me that this cycle is not quite done, especially with the two of wands there. There's new opportunities and a new path opening up. The star also speaks to alignment. It's coming into alignment. It's, it's also coming into healing and divine timing. It's everything you hope to wish for, but there's an, a need for patience. It's also Aquarius energy, which is kind of like marching to the beat of your own drum. It's a lot of freedom. I want to, um, let's get one more on the palace of coins. So even though this environment might not look stable right now, it's actually very divinely guided with the star there. It's meant to be exactly how it is right now. You're exactly what, where you're supposed to be. Five of Pentacles in reverse. I actually really like that. This this uh, scarcity mindset. If you feel that you don't have enough right now in palace, in the palace of coins in reverse, that is a scarcity mindset as well. You're going to be coming out of that energy, coming out of it very soon. Let's look at the Queen of Cups. I want to get a shuffle in here. Tell me about the Queen of Cups for Capricorn, please, Spirit. Why is the Queen of Cups here for Capricorn? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Why is the Queen of Cups here for Capricorn? We have the Queen of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, so this queen might distract herself with work a lot or have a tendency to always try to be very logical about things and build things and fix things and always do, 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 instead of really approaching things from a very emotional perspective. We do have the queen to the king of swords on the board now. So we do have a true pair. Does look like a karmic partnership with one upright and one reverse, but we will see when we clarify the king. Something about the queen of cups. Then we have the magician and we have the two of cups as well. They're manifesting this connection to it kind of like fixing it to be honest with you hi they this feels like really intense to be honest this feels like really freaking intense um two of cups is cancer energy magician is that mercurial gemini virgo energy that's what i was talking about um eight of pentacles is more virgo energy and libra energy with the queen of swords bottom of the deck we have the two of pentacles in reverse um there's no there's no indecision it's just very clear that's why she's so decisive that's why she's a queen of swords it's kind of like i know i want this connection i know i want to work on this i know i want this person emotionally i'm a little shut down right now i'm a little drained i feel a little taken advantage of but there's something about this that's very um i literally was about to say intoxicating which is kind of like devil energy but it's not um I think that this queen's aware that there's toxic tendencies to the connection that need to be healed, right? It doesn't mean that the connection itself is toxic. There's just aspects of this connection that need to be fixed. Let's look at the king of swords. Ace of swords in reverse. Hangman in reverse. Five of wands in reverse. And the three of pentacles. Wheel of fortune, bottom of the deck. And the queen of wands. Very nice. Okay, I like this. This king is understanding that they're not being their most authentic self. With the hangman in reverse, they know that they don't want to continue the drama. They don't want to continue the conflict between them and this queen of swords either. They want to, they want to work together with the three of pentacles. So both people want to work. They want to rebuild. They want to start a new stable foundation. And you have the wheel of fortune, which is working in their favor. It's a lot of divinity. It's divine time. The wheel is spinning. Change is occurring. So this is good. Ace of Swords, Air, Hangman, Pisces, Neptune, Five of Wands, Leo, Three of Pentacles, Capricorn. Let's look at this Empress for Capricorn. Okay, see, so I just heard Total Surrender again. I think we've heard that previously in this reading. I can't remember. I've done so many readings today, but I just heard Total Surrender. Tell me about the Empress, please, for Capricorn. See, I feel this in my sacral. I feel this in my sacral all the way through to my back. Um, sacral and solar plexus, which is all about the self worth. It's also uh, where you man well, you technically you manifest from your root chakra, but like soul energy, sacral energy is also a manifestation, creative power. Okay, um, there's something about the Empress that feels very like solar to me all the time, though. Very like empowering. Talk about the Empress for Capricorn. Okay, my throat just got tight. Talk about the Empress, please. Yeah, total, okay, that's a big old stack. 
big old stacks for days. So we have the moon, which is divine feminine, but also illusions, secrets, two of pentacles. Okay, so the empress, the feminine energy confuses all living hell, basically. We have the moon and the two of pentacles. They go back and forth. Do I give, 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 or do I focus on myself? Do I give, they're trying to find the balance between what to do in this connection, right? And that's really what it feels like because the, the moon card, those two dogs you see, you have the wild dog and the domestic dog. Do I go and allow my inner, my inner child, my playfulness to go explore and be who I must want to be? Or do I tame myself and almost like care and give and give and give to this connection? Do I, do I be nurturing, right? Do I be domestic? Bottom of the deck is the chariot, right? Followed by the freaking unknown card, of course, right? All this divinity basically saying just to chill out and allow things to unfold. I know, don't you love all the clarity we're getting from this reading? Yes, that was sarcasm. That was a lot of sarcasm because I feel like we're just seeing these people's emotions and the universe is kind of like, hey, divine timing, all this divine timing. Divine timing for what? Can, can we know, please? <laughs> we understand that the connection's staying, but I'd like to know what's happening between the two people. And obviously they're going through some transformation. That's great. That's great. We're integrating a lot of our shadow. I'd like some answers. <laughs> Let's look at this Empress. <laughs> the Fool! Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Um, <laughs> sorry, got a little excited. Uranus Aquarius energy. They, they see stepping into a new cycle with this individual as a risk though. They do see it as a risk. And I think that's where this indeci in <laughs> indecision comes from. Yep, bottom of the deck is the lovers. Can we get any more majors for this connection? Most likely not, but we probably could, honestly. Um, they, they see it as a risk to move forward in this connection, but it's obviously a risk because it's triggering a lot of fears and they're aware of all the trauma both people have to heal right now. But that is the that is why there's so much divinity. It's a very divinely guided connection because both people are triggering a lot of healing within the other, and that is the purpose of deep soul connections to trigger lots of healing and growth and evolution and pushing us outside of our comfort zones to become better versions of ourselves. So let's look at the Eight of Cups. Let's get a shuffle in here. I feel a shuffle. For Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Let's look at the Eight of Cups for Capricorn, please, Spirit. What is the Eight of Cups here for Capricorn? Show me what I need to see about the Eight of Cups for Capricorn. The Three of Swords in reverse. Hell yeah. What are we walking away from? All the pain, all the heartache, all the hurt that we have had in the past. Tell me about the Eight of Cups. Okay, we're not going to take all that. That's a lot. That's a big old stack. Tell me about the Eight of Cups, please. We have Judgment, the Ten of Wands in reverse, Emperor in reverse. Wow, so now we have the Emperor and the Empress. Then we have the Seven of Cups and we have the Six of Pentacles. Interesting, okay. So we have the Emperor and the Empress. So we have a true shadow pair. So no wonder we're doing all this damn healing. So these two people are walking away from the parts of themselves that needed to be healed, right? And that's what their soul was calling them to do. Very, very nice. But the Seven of Pentacles, I mean the Seven of Cups, it's kind of like your hopes and your dreams. And the Six of Pentacles is them being open to giving and receiving all of that they've hoped and wished for, which is really, really nice. I like that. Bottom of the deck is the freaking sun. All the happiness, all the love, all the contentment, everything they could want and more. Yes. Very, very nice. Okay, let's look at this page of pentacles, the overall. The four of cups, yeah. Both people were resisting looking at why they emotionally weren't happy. <laughs> well, what do you mean I have to, because the page of pentacles to me is like the self-reflector card. What do you mean I gotta look at the things that are hurting my heart space? I don't wanna look at like my rejection and my abandonment. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna look at my 10 of cups in reverse and my 10 of swords in reverse. I don't wanna look at my depression. I don't wanna do all that. No thanks. I don't wanna look at why my heart space is closed, six of pentacles in reverse. I don't wanna do that. This connection is gonna force you to do that. 
which is really nice because that means that it's helping you heal and it's helping you become vulnerable, right? You queen of cups in reverse, that's done, right? Death, because now you're learning to open up your heart space. Okay, so just because I know everybody's gonna be like, well, what do you think's happening in this connection? Are they staying together or are they leaving? I will pull romance angels because I'm just as confused as you are. So. I think that honestly, these people are just working through their shadows together. I don't really feel that the connection's ending. I feel that they were just triggering each other's shadow and going through the healing side by side. What's the potential outcome of this connection for Capricorn? I'll take the one that's all by itself. Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Bottom of the deck is heart-to-heart -heart conversations, followed by true love, followed by past life relationship. There's your freaking answer, okay? You have known each other before. This is the romance of a lifetime. Honestly, discuss your feelings with one another. I know some of you are like, oh, oh, I felt that one. Ew, wait, do what? You want me to, wait, I'm sorry, what was that? You want me to honestly discuss what? What I ate this morning? No, your feelings, honey. Discuss your feelings. Not what you have for breakfast. Nobody cares about those damn Cheerios, okay? Okay, and then engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Okay, very nice. I love it, beautiful. You're doing shadow work together. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> it's hard, but it's worth it, okay? This is what I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you want a personal reading or a Reiki session uh, to, dig, to dig into your own situation, go ahead and book it down below. Be my website in the description box. And like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Hit that notification bell so you see when I post and when I go live. If you want a free 15 minute reading, check out my Patreon channel and check out Vimeo. Other than that, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.